morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Are any of you in school yet? How many people are in school? Yeah? Uh, what grade? Somebody tell me all at one time. What grade are you in? Third, sixth grade. Sixth grade, third grade. What up? First grade. Fifth grade, right? We have a lot of people different now. You're out of school now for the summer, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you like summer? I love summertime. I love being out of school. Um, not that I didn't like school, but I loved being out of school. And um, right now, yeah, well, that's good. That's what you do. When you're out of school, you can play in the sprinkler. You can go to the pool. You can do all those kind of things. So that's neat. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about something um, that I think you guys understand better than the adults. Does anybody uh, know what the word, now you hear this word in church a lot, what the word faith means? What's faith? Trust. 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 What else? What's faith? Trust is a good word, but what are you trusting in? God. Trusting in God, that's right. Let me tell you what the definition the Bible gives you of faith. Faith is when you believe something that you can't see. When you believe something that you can't see. And you know what? God says that you guys are better at this than even adults when they grow up. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that you don't get bad like us adults do. Because sometimes when we get older, we begin to see things and then... That's how we react on what we see. But you believe things sometimes so good that you can't even see, right? How many people believe that you're going to go to heaven? Okay. All right, Jaylee, you're going to go to heaven, right? Have you ever seen heaven? So you just believe it. Why do you believe it? Exactly. And God said it in his word, right? So you have faith in what God said. That's how you know about heaven. Now, how many people believe uh, that Noah built an ark and everyone uh, already your hands go, if you believe that, right? Now, were you there when that ark was built? But you believe it anyway. Why? It's in the Bible. God said it, right? So even though you don't see it, you believe it. You trust things. And sometimes when you get older, like us, we start seeing things and all of a sudden we forget about the things we're supposed to trust God for. Now, today, you'll know that um, you'll hear people talk about having faith in this and having faith in that. It's different than having faith in God. I've heard people say before, they have faith in their ball team. I have faith my ball team's going to win. Now, have you ever heard people say that before? Like I heard this year as different ball teams were playing for in colleges for the national championship. And I heard people say, I have faith they're going to do it. They've made it this far. I have faith they're going to do it. Now, that particular team, they didn't do it. Even though people had faith. Well, what kind of faith is that? That kind of faith is just a hoping faith. It's a wishing. It's a wanting faith. But faith in God is different. Faith in God means you believe something and God can always make it happen. So which kind of faith do you need to have? Faith in things or faith in God? Of course, faith in God, right? Now, well, is God going to be happy with you if you have faith in Him? This is what the Bible tells us. Do you know the Bible tells us that if we have faith, then we make God happy? If we don't have faith, we don't make God happy? To believe something you can't see about God or what He says, you will make God happy. He tells us without faith, it's impossible to please Him. How many of you want to please God? then you've got to be able to believe things you can't see. And as you get older, then you're going to have a lot of people tell you that, hey, that isn't real. How do you know that? And your answer to them is, I believe it even though I can't see it. Because faith is how you get to God. How many people saw Jesus die on a cross? Anybody here see Jesus die on a cross? Didn't see him. How many people believe he died on a cross? You have to believe it. Even though you didn't see it, you have to believe it. Now, listen, that's the only thing you truly can believe. Now, even me, how many people have faith in me? Faith in Pastor Mike. Do you have faith in me? You believe. Like, you believe that I'm going to give you some fruity snacks at the end of this? Why? Why do you believe that? Because I always do. You're right, Hunter, because I always do. But do you know that even I could let you down? You can't have faith in me, but you can have faith in God because He never will let you down. So you have to remember that. Who do you need to have faith in? God. Always having faith in God. All right, pray with me. Lord, I love you. I pray, God, that we could see as these children do. I pray, God, that our eyes were able to be open unto things that we could see that 
others couldn't see. Lord, things that we can understand and accept that, Lord, others can't accept. I just pray, God, that you would increase our faith. Lord, that you would let us apply our faith. And for these children, I pray, God, as they grow up, that that trust, that pure trust that they have, which is trust in you, Lord, is a light that shines to others so that their faith can grow in others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Here you go. How many people have your Bibles today? If you have your Bible, stand up and raise it above your head and bear witness of God's Word. Amen, that's awesome. You may be seated, please. Turn, if you would, please, to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. When you find your place, just say, I have it. For some of you Bible students that know about Hebrews chapter 11, you know that this is the roll call, the hall of fame for those that the Bible says had faith. When we read through the book of Hebrews 11 or the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, we realize that God gave us example after example of those that have faith. So what an appropriate thing to talk about in church. We're going to talk about faith. And you think, well, that's a remedial subject for us to cover. We're far advanced. We're past that. And I disagree. I think sometimes we say the word faith, we think about faith, but we don't understand the dynamics of faith and how important it is. Even Christians believing something that you can't see. So Hebrews chapter 11, as the writer of Hebrews begins, I'm going to read verses 1 through 7, if you'll join with me. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are not seen, things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had a testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please, to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. By faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 begins by talking about faith. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of, listen to this, things not seen. Things not seen. Can you repeat that phrase with me? One more time. Again, things not, seen. things not seen are hard for us to grasp, aren't we? We're visual people. We want to see it. Things not seen, that's a difficult area, but not for a child. A child can work on things not seen, right? A child can be excited on things not seen. Their mind is open. They have a trust that adults don't have. They have this trust because... Their mind is not developed to that keen analytical state that ours is, where we take everything that we see and we judge everything by that. And from that, we become upset, we become fearful, we become worried because of what we think might happen. True? 
We analyze things to death. Webster defines faith as, you know, and as, as Jay Lee was mentioning, when you ask a child, what is faith? She gave me a one word, trust. Guess what? Webster says faith is trust, confidence. Now listen, complete acceptance of a truth which cannot be demonstrated or proved by the process of logical thought. Ooh, there's where we mess up, right? Let me read that to you again. Webster said, complete acceptance of a truth which cannot be demonstrated or proved by the process of logical thought. That means that it is something that I haven't seen and I can't see, but yet I believe it, right? Now let's go back to the writer of Hebrews. He said, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, to have faith in God is different than having faith in your favorite ball team. It's a totally different faith. Anything outside of God that we believe in and have faith in, we can be disappointed in, but we can't be disappointed having faith in God. Amen. Thank you. And we all should be praising God for that. Unless you're never disappointed. Anybody in here never disappointed any day? Do you know that faith in God will never disappoint you? Never. And in a world where we're disappointed on a daily basis, we should praise God for something that never disappoints us. How many people have believed in other people before, but you've been disappointed by those people? And all the different marriage counseling and the parent-child counseling, knowing that somebody has let somebody down. They really had faith in them. They believed in them, but now that person has let them down. Understand that a faith in God is a sure faith. That's a sure trust, a sure belief in something, but I don't want to get away from our things not seen statement. You see, faith in God means to believe in God and to believe in all the things of God that He has told us that we have never seen. Let me explain. You see, we pray by faith to God, but yet, do you know that each prayer that you pray to God, a true prayer, is a prayer of faith? How many of you have spent the last 24 hours some alone time with God praying to Him? Well, isn't that ridiculous? What if nobody's listening to you? What if you're knelt down there and you're just praying away, talking out loud, talking to yourself, and nobody's listening? Oh, you look at me like, well, I'm just giving you the world's viewpoint. You're ridiculous. Why are you ridiculous? You're praying to something that you can't see. How do you know God is listening to you? You have faith. You believe that He says, come to me. I'll never, I'll never cast you out. Come to me. Pray to me, talk to me. You have faith, you believe that, right? What about when we stand and sing to God? Did you sing praises to God today? You realize the song that we sang, Holy, 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 is a song that we'll sing in heaven. And you're going to sing it to God. Wouldn't you feel ridiculous if you're just singing today? God, I'm singing to you, I have my hands raised. Nobody's looking, nobody's listening. Well, don't you have faith that God is listening today? All these things sound ridiculous to somebody that is not like you are, that does not believe, that does not have faith. Why? Because when they have, do not have faith, they can't see the things that you can see. So today, I know that we have different things that we believe. We accept the Bible as the Word of God, but how many people here saw the people that wrote the Word of God? How many people saw them? Have you seen them? How many people were there? You believe the Word of God. Anybody believe the Word of God in here? Good, good. What about Moses when he stood up there and he raised that staff and the waters parted? How many people believe that happened? Hey, were you there? Were you there? But you're telling me you believe it. Right. So, sounds ridiculous, but you're able to see things others can't see. Even now, those that are listening don't understand, even up to this point, because I'm, I'm talking about things not seen. Now, let's go on. How many people believe that God created the universe? He spoke the world into existence, right? Hey, were you there? So what are you going on? Why do you believe it? Well, that God said it, right? It's one of the first things that He wanted us to know. We believe that God sent His Son, Jesus, to die for our sins how many people believe that? 
Yeah. How many people believe that Jesus died on the cross? Hey, were you there? Did you see it? No, but you're accepting. You're believing something that you didn't see. What about being buried? Was he buried? Yep. Well, what was it like that day? What was the weather like that day? Blake, do you know? You weren't there? But you believe it, right? He was buried. What about the day he rose again? Do you believe that he rose again? Yes. Yeah, so you were there with Martha and Mary like they say? No, you just, you believe it though. Understand what we're getting at here. Faith is when we accept something that we didn't or can't see. We trust something. Faith is believing something that you can't see and faith in God is believing that God is who he says he is, not just believing that there is a God, but believing the things about him that you can't see. You see, to have true faith in God, you have to believe that the only way that you can come to God in a relationship with him is to also believe in his son Jesus and have faith in his act of salvation. If you say, I just, I believe in God. How many people have witnessed to somebody before? They said, I believe in God. Well, that's good. That gets you right on the same level. The book of James says, as all the devils in the earth, they believe in God. But believing in who God is, is different. Believing in what God said is different. Believing in what he commands us to do is different. Believing in his whole person is different. Believing on him and then believing on his son Jesus and what he did for us. We know this simple verse, John three sixteen, that tells us God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now listen, that whosoever believeth in him, believeth in Jesus, has faith. Now did you see him? No, you didn't, but you believe on him. Faith. Then Jesus said in John 14, I'm the only way. I'm the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. I am it. I'm the only way. What do you mean I am? He that believeth on me is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Read the, the rest of John 3, 16, 17, and 18, right? It's all about believing. And then Paul backed it up in 1 Corinthians 9. 10, 9 and 10, and said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, all these things that we are asked to do are things that we did not see and can't see right now. How ridiculous must we look to those who think they can see? Now, I bring this up for a, a valid reason. You see, this faith that we talk about having, this church word that we talk about having, you see, God calls on us not just to know these things, but to apply these things. He tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians, he tells us that I want you to, to walk by faith. That means your daily walk, what you do, how you act, how you speak, how you worry about every little thing, how things consume you, how you get caught up, how you get on the wrong path. I want you to walk by faith, not by sight. Because the unbeliever can walk by sight. You know, when you walk by sight, you react. When you walk by faith, you act. When you walk by sight, you react. Why? Because something's happening this way. Hey, I heard this piece of news. Here's a financial pitfall in my way. Here's a health pitfall. Here's a relationship pitfall. So I'm going to panic or I'm going to come up with a plan or I'm going to sit and worry and obsess over this thing because I'm walking by sight and it's coming. When you walk by faith, it's a different kind of walk. You're trusting God and knowing that you're walking by faith as God's child. When those things happen, you're not using the same kind of logic you're using the spiritual logic, if you will. Amen. You see, in 2 Corinthians 5, as I was alluding to it, it talks about the temporary. It says we, we have this temporary body. It actually calls it a tabernacle, which is a tent. It says while we're in this tabernacle, this earthly tabernacle, this tent, it says we're going to experience all kinds of hardships and this and that. But it is temporary. 
And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, let me just read 2 Corinthians 4 to you. I, I think this is pretty neat. Just listen to this last verse. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. That means temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So here we go, talking about things not seen again. Boy, we really must look ridiculous believing in these things, right? You mean to tell me you've never spoken to a person and they've belittled you or acted like you were just ignorant? Because you're believing something that you can't see. Hebrews 11.6 says, Do you know without faith it is impossible to please God? You say, well, I've got faith. I want us to be able to look at our faith today and see what level of faith we have. Because without faith it's impossible to please God. Now I want you to think to yourself right now, am I pleasing God? right now with the level of faith that i have right now am i pleasing god now you take your time i'm going to give you about five or ten seconds i want you to just run your whole life through your mind in about five or ten seconds i want you to be able to see okay at the level of faith that i'm at right now am i pleasing god because without faith it's impossible to please god do you believe that passage of scripture it goes on to say because he that cometh to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So let me give you the, the thing about faith that I want us to see first of all today. There is two different kinds of faith. We know that faith is believing in something that you can't see, but if you're here today and you're a Christian, you say, well, I've got faith. Well, if you're a Christian, you do have faith. You had to have a faith to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. That is a saving faith. You believe that Jesus died for you, He was buried, He rose again, that you are a sinner and you're separated from God. So you accepted Jesus as your Savior, who you did not see die for you. You accepted that. That's the only way that you can get to God. How many people have done that by faith today? If you have, raise your hand. Bear witness of it. Okay, now, that was a saving faith. Do you realize that you can have that saving faith and then continue in your daily walk without faith? He said, oh no, once I've got that faith. Listen, I see people every day that are doing this. I've been one of those people before. I can go back in, in, in little areas of my life where I know that I exhibited that initial faith, but then I was faithless for days and months and years. It's like I believed on him for my salvation, but that's it. Faith stopped. That initial faith stopped. Now, in order to truly come to God, you have to have a relationship with God by believing in God by faith. That means you have to believe that He is who He says He is and that He will reward your fellowship here on earth and eternal life if you come to Him seeking that relationship with Him. To seek Him, you must have faith. How in the world would you seek for God or look for Him or want to draw close to Him unless you believed in Him? So today I want us to see that our, our faith enables us to see things that those without faith cannot see. And the reason I say this, uh, I get to this point, because we say today as Christians this phrase, why can't people see this or that? I watch the news, I read the paper because I'm your pastor, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to see what's going on, what's coming your way, what the Bible says and what you can be warned about and this and that, and every day it seems like I'm shaking my head and I'm saying, why can't people see this? Now, am I alone in this? And I got to the point where I, I, I thought, Angie must be tired of, of me saying, what in the world are they thinking? Why can't they see what's happening? So today, in part, I want to answer myself. The reason that people can't see what are, what's happening is because people can't see because they have no faith in God. You say, well, that's not a, a technical answer. Well, it is. Why should I expect all these people that don't believe in God to see anything the way we're seeing it? Well, I shouldn't. You say, well, what do you do? Get disappointed about it? No, no, no. God gives a plan. See, our job is to go out 
and do something with our faith so that others can have faith. So that we don't sit and complain about why people can't see what's happening. Because they could see things that are unseen if they had faith. Do you know as a Christian, you have this advantage, you can see things people can't see? And they think that you're just out there. But do you know that one day, they'll be able to see it? We just don't want their one day to be too late. You see, faith in God enables us to see the unseen. God reveals things to his children that have, those people that have accepted him by faith that others can't see because they have no faith. And our example comes today. I, I want to focus on Hebrews 11, verse 7. This is the verse that we come to that everything is geared on. I think of all the people that had faith in the Bible that relates to the unseen, I think Noah Noah is an example of this, and I want to talk about Noah a little bit today. So go back to Hebrews 11. I want to read verse 7 to you because what a huge verse. Listen to this. By faith. Can you tell me those first two words there? By faith. faith, Noah, being warned of God. Now here's our sermon. Listen. Being warned of God of things not seen. Now go back to Hebrews 1 a minute. Faith is the substance. Of things hoped for. The evidence of what? Tell me together. Again. Now go to verse 7. By faith Noah being warned of God of what? Isn't that amazing how God can tie this together and he's going to give us a lesson about things not seen. Noah being warned of God about things not seen as yet. He moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Something interesting here. I want you to look at verse 7. We do a little Bible study, a little word Bible study. What were the first two words in that verse? What are the last two words in that verse? Hey, what do you think he's trying to tell us? By faith. What happened? You mean to tell me that I'm going to be able to apply Noah's life to my life? Absolutely. Everything that God gives us in the Bible, we can apply. Today, as we look at this man, Noah, we should be able to see some things that are not seen by others. You see, in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, this chapter about faith, we see a man, Noah, that the Bible says Noah's faith, Noah's faith is what made a difference in his life. And because of Noah's faith, He was warned by God about things that had not been seen as yet. All because of his faith, by faith, right? Twice in that that verse. How many of you know the story of Noah? What did God, before I ask you this, I'm going to ask you, not for everybody to shout out. If you know the answer, raise your hand. You're not in school, but listen. If you know the answer, raise your hand. I want to see the hands quiz here what did God warn Noah about raise your hand if you know look at that now keep your hands raised everybody that knows at one time I want you to say the answer what did God warn Noah about the flood well what's behind this story we know all about it listen God warned Noah about a flood is that a big deal it's a pretty big deal uh, because Now, hold on, let's go back to this verse 7. God warned Noah about things not seen as yet. You say, well, he warned him about a flood. Well, hey, here's a little news flash here that a, a, a flood had never been seen. At this point in time, nobody knew what a flood was. So when God warned Noah about a flood, hey, a flood had never been seen. Hey, as a matter of fact, rain had never been seen. No, we're going to have a flood. It's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. A flood? Really? What's a flood? Well, it's going to be caused by the rain. No, for 40 days? Hey, what's rain? I've never seen them. Boy, Noah must have had some faith, right? Because it said he acted upon this. Now go on. It says God was warning Noah about this flood that was coming. And we'll see in Genesis chapter 6 how he warns them. But I want you to see something pretty neat here. You see, God was not just warning Noah about a flood and rain. God was warning Noah about the coming judgment that was happening. 
And see, Noah believed in God to where he didn't have to know what a flood was or what rain was. He knew that when God said something's going to happen, I'm going to judge man because of the wickedness that's going on. He knew something was going to happen. So he had faith in God's judgment. Is that important? Well, it is if we read Genesis chapter 6. So turn to Genesis chapter 6 if you would. Listen to the beginning of this story. Genesis chapter 6. You'll see that God began to warn Noah of the coming judgment that was going to be upon the earth because of, listen, the wickedness that was upon the earth at this time. Verse 5. Genesis 6, and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Can you imagine? They were living in a time where wickedness was prevalent, where all the things that God said are right and wrong were being disavowed and people were going around doing what they wanted to do with no respect of God. If God said this is wrong, Society began to live as if God was nobody. And they, if he said it was wrong, they glorified it. Can you imagine living in a time like this? It said, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I've made them. Listen to verse eight. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, in verses 14 through 17, he begins to give you the description of the, the ark that he wants Noah to build. You'll be able to see that he gives him specific instructions. We learn in verse 5 that God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thought of his heart was evil continually. In verse 11, we see that the earth was corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence. Verse 13, he said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Now, here's what Noah had to work on. We see in 14 through 17 that he gave him the specifics of building the ark. Noah, I want you to build an ark 450 feet long. That's a football field and a, and a half. 75 feet wide. 45 feet tall. I want you to go get two of every animal on the earth and have them come in it and put all the feed that's in there to save your family, humanity, and all that will listen to you. So I, this is what I want you to do. Do you think that Noah had any idea how to build an ark. Do you think that Noah had any idea what rain was or what a flood was? He had never seen any of those things, but Noah saw the wickedness of man. He saw what was happening that God was basing this on. You see, that's what he needed to see is that God recognized what was going on. And he was telling him, this will happen. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord because he believed he had faith. By faith, remember verse 7, Noah was warned by God. Pretty interesting here that as we see Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, you say, well, this is just an Old Testament story. Well, not really. You see, we're a lot like Noah. You say, well, how does this apply to us? Well, God tells us that in the same way, by that same faith. Now Noah, remember verse 7? By faith Noah, right? Do you know that Paul told us in the book of Ephesians chapter 2? For by grace are you saved through faith. Just like Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace is what God gives us that we don't deserve. 
Do you know that God gave us something we didn't deserve? How many people here deserve to go to heaven? Please don't raise your hand. We don't, right? How many people are going? Grace, right? Grace, grace, marvelous grace. That's what's going to let us go. Something that we're going to get we don't deserve. We found grace in the eyes of the Lord, but we find ours by faith. Guess what? Noah found his by faith also, right? So here's the big question. What motivated Noah to build an ark which he had never seen, to escape a flood which he had never seen, that was caused by rain which he had never seen? What motivated him to work for a hundred years on an idea that was based on something he had never seen? The nearest body of water was hundreds of miles away from where Noah was at this time. He had never seen a ship. Most of the people there had never seen anything. By faith. Noah, being warned of God of things not seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark for the savings of his house. You see, his faith, his belief in what God had said to him about God's judgment that was going to come, his observance of the continual wickedness of society, and his faith and belief, what God said, this was going to happen, this is what you need to do. It's faith. Did he see any of those things? No. But he saw what was going on at the time he was living. And he addressed God by doing what God said he needed to do by faith. This is a pretty big deal. It's about things not seen. I talk to a lot of people that just will not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. They refuse to believe because they can't see it. Now, did others understand what Noah was doing? No. As a matter of fact, after 100 years, the only people that were able to get on the ark were, with him were his wife, his three sons, and their wives. 100 years of doing something. I mean, you sort of notice when there's a 450-foot-long structure being built, you have to think at some point in time, What's his motivation? Especially since he was saying it was going to rain, there was going to be a flood, and you need to get on this ark to be saved. You would have to consider what the man said, but nobody believed it because they couldn't see it. They didn't have faith that God is the one that said it. So how do we know Noah really had faith? Because his faith became an action. Hebrews 11 said, after God warned him about things that he had never seen, the Bible says he moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He acted upon his faith. Now, how many of us have faith in God? Do you realize that is totally different than acting upon your faith? We have faith in God and we sit in this room and we say we believe in God. How many people believe that God is in control of all things? Raise your hand. How many people believe that God is omniscient, omnipresent? How many people believe that God is sovereign? And that His providence, He can make anything happen, right? We believe that. Okay? But yet, in that belief, would you say that you worry also? That you fear situations? In that same belief, there are areas where we back up. We're not like God wants us to be completely because in those areas that we believe that so strongly, we still fear. We doubt God. We don't have faith in God. We don't really believe it because we factored what we can see in it. You know, we can see that bill in front of us. We can see that doctor's report. We can see that x-ray. We can see that MRI. We can see this relationship. We can see how bad it's going to be going. We can see our lonely selves uh, when this relationship is bust up. We can see this thing that's happening bad at work. We can see this job change. We can see all these things. So we react upon it. But do you know that true faith lets you be able to operate on the unseen? The unseen hand of God is working in all those things to fix all those things so that He can be glorified by you and praise Him. Not so that you can be a fearful person walking around. That's not faith. It's the opposite of faith. The Bible said he moved with fear. Does that mean that he was afraid of God? No, this fear means that he began to 
Act based on his respect and trust and reverence for what God had said. This is a big deal. You see, Noah was strong enough in his faith to act upon what God told him to do to save his family, even though no one else could see it. Is this a big deal? Well, it is a big deal. How many of you have ever been criticized because you're bringing your, church, your family to church three times a week? How many people in here have been criticized for that? What are you doing? Going to church again? It's Sunday night. It's Wednesday night. Go take your time. Go do that. Well, why are you even coming? Why are you coming to church? Because is, is it an opportunity for you to hear the word of God and draw close to God? Yes, it is. And for your faith to grow. But nobody's going to see that. They're not going to understand that. How many people have been criticized because you don't say a certain, uh, have language in your house or, or participate in different things in your house? Your, your house is, oh, we don't allow that. We're not a house that, that curses here. We're not a house that, that believes in alcohol. We're not a house that does these things. And people are criticizing you for it because they can't see what you're trying to see. You're standing on something by faith, right? It was a big deal because Noah did it for 100 years. An ark, Noah, really, really an ark. Hey, your dad is a nutcase. Can you imagine what they told the Sham, Ham, and Japheth? Your dad's a nutcase, man. He's got you guys out working. He's doing all these things. I believe these boys stood up for their dad. Yeah. I believe they didn't just make it on the ark because they were Noah's sons. I believe they made it on the ark because they believed. Right. You see, Noah wasn't just building an ark. When the Bible says he saved his family, now listen closely. Noah didn't save his family by building an ark. Noah saved his family by having faith in God and sharing his faith with his family. You said, well, no, he built an ark. No. I believe that if those young men of his, those boys, if they didn't believe in God, they would have been outside the ark like everybody else that didn't believe in God. Noah saved his family by sharing his faith. Noah was not just an ark builder. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it tells us a little bit about Noah. It references him. It talks about God's judgment on the world. It says that God spared not the people that were living in the days of Noah. It says, but he spared Noah and he called them. Listen, did he call Noah an ark builder? No. You know what he called him? A preacher of righteousness. Noah just happened to be building an ark while he was preaching. But Noah was a preacher of righteousness. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. If you're a child of God, you're a preacher. You're a proclaimer. What are you proclaiming? Proclaiming your faith in God. The same way Noah was. You see, Noah was preaching the same message that we need to be preaching. What is that message? It's pretty simple. It's clear. Number one, believe in God. And believe in what he says for us to do to believe in God. Number two, stop living wickedly. And believe in what he says to do for us to stop living wickedly. Number three, accept God's salvation. And believe in what he says for us to accept God's salvation. So everything that God tells us to do is in his word. And it all has to do with believing. Noah only took seven people into this ark with him. His wife, three sons, and their daughters. And. We ask sometimes this big old ark and only eight people. Why didn't any more people go in? Well, the clear answer is something that we probably need to take into consideration today. The answer is pretty simple. They didn't believe in the unseen. Those people didn't believe in God's judgment. If you read the story of the flood, you'll realize that the flood came upon them all of a sudden. The details are that Noah went into the ark and for seven days they were in the ark. And then after the seventh day, then the rain started. And even during those seven days, after people watched animals two by two come into that ark, they still didn't believe. They didn't believe what God said. How did they know what God said? Noah was preaching it. Remember, he was a preacher of righteousness. And they refused to believe him. He was preaching about the unseen. Oh, that crazy pastor that's down in Rockwell that's speaking about this stuff today. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're listening and you're going to think, you know what? I'm too intelligent to believe that. There's a lot of people that are too intelligent to have faith. Those people will spend eternity in a devil's hell being tormented 
separated from God because they're too intelligent to have faith. Well, why? Because faith has nothing to do with logic. It's accepting something that's not seen. It's when God lets us see something that's not seen and believe it so strongly. It motivates us. Like Noah, to work for a hundred years, he believed in something. God warned him of things not seen. Do you know that today we are in the same situation as Noah? We're living in a world overtaken by wickedness that doesn't believe what God has said is going to happen because they can't see it. They have no faith in God. So to answer my question and your question that you're asking, why can't people see? Because there is an absence of faith, an absence of belief in God today. The things that we believe, we hold true. The thing that our country was founded on, and they even stated, these things which we hold true. We've stopped holding true. We've stopped believing. I talked to a young man this week that's from Brazil. He said, I love being here in this country, but I'm afraid for it. He said, I come from a country that is not based like your country is based. He says, they always rejected God and had all kinds of things. Your country was based on God, but now y'all are turning away. And now I'm here and I'm afraid. This is coming from somebody that, that loved the country and moved into it. I sat this week and listened to someone who is campaigning to be the, the, the leader of this country that said, I want to see a country where people can worship whatever God they want to worship. Many different gods. I watched this week the world rise and celebrate Islam, which is against Jesus Christ. And his salvation and glorify it. And other religious leaders stand with them and say, hey, we're all unified as different beliefs. But we come together when God clearly said you're for me or you're against me. You can't, you can't accept by faith and then believe the other way. This, that's wickedness. I watch What's going on now to where, where God says it's clearly wrong is glorified. I've watched in the past two years two sexually abominable sins that are glorified by our government, by our press, and by everything. No matter what you do, it used to be, it, it would be scorned out of public address. But now you can change, you can try to change who you think you are as far as your sexual gender and you're glorified. We made a hero out of a man that used to be a hero in the Olympics and then he wanted to change. We made a hero out of him. And I was told while I was saying something about that, the church is not the place to do it. Well, guess what, pal? We're addressing it now because we laid down and didn't say how wrong it was then. And then you talk about the societal views on prayer. The societal views on being able to speak the name of Jesus. The societal views on marriage and living together, on abortion. Well, all those things are just like in Noah's day. They didn't believe God. You say, well, we believe God. I want us to challenge our faith and our belief in God because I believe that if we really believe God the way Noah did, you see, he acted upon it. I believe a lot of us have believed God for salvation, but I can look back on times in my life and maybe you're like this right now, but if I believed in God the way I was supposed to, and if we had the majority of people that say they believe in God, believing God like they're supposed to, I don't think you could put a barricade in front of this door strong enough to keep people out of here today knowing they could come and worship God Almighty and they could bring their children into the presence of God knowing they could save their soul from hell if they would believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. But the fact is people don't believe that. They just don't believe it. There's an absence of faith and people can't see it because it's not in front of them. You say, well, do you think this really applies to us today? I, I think it does as Paul wrote a letter to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Listen to these verses. He's warning him. This is a warning. This is what's happening today. Now listen, the Bible says, This know also that in the last days, which days? Somebody tell me. 
perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, dis disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Do we see any of that going on today? I watched in the past year, the people that are celebrated, athletes in the world that glorify their self and pound their chest, and it's all about boasting. You watch generationally, it come back. Nobody's, the ones that not bringing glory to God, but bringing glory to their self. It's all a boasting kind of prideful issue. Then on top of that, blasphemers. People don't respect God enough to not blaspheme these days. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. You know what that means? That means they don't know who they are. Or they want to be somebody different. Without natural affection means that it's not man and woman. It's man and man or woman and woman. God addressed it back then. Without natural affection, look up the definition. It means that you've screwed up the way that God's order was put in place. That was happening in those days. It happened again in Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's happening again today. You say, why are you bringing it up? Listen, it's a warning. The same way God warned Noah, He's warning us today. Well, why is this applicable to the sermon? Because Noah acted on his warning. Guys, the reason that this has taken a foothold on society, now hold on to your seat, okay? It's our fault. Because if we really believed in God's judgment of what He said, we wouldn't be carrying on the way we're carrying on. We would be building an ark for the saving of society. Yeah, God, help us. You'd be out there working with your family and working with your friends, letting them know what God had said by faith, no matter what they called you. It wouldn't be a matter of shame. It wouldn't be a matter of societal embarrassment. It wouldn't be a matter of this person thinks we're crazy or this person does this. It wouldn't be a matter. It would be a matter of going out and saying, I believe what God says and so I'm going to act upon it for the saving of my family, the saving of my friends, if we really believed it. But our mind gets distracted, right? These are the last days like he's talking about. And if you go back to Matthew chapter 24, here's the big deal. Matthew 24, Jesus even speaks about it. I want to close with this scripture in Matthew 24. I want you to be able to read it with me. Listen to what he says. Verse 37, it's amazing how God brings it all back around. He says, but as in the days of Noah, who happens to be our subject today, as the days of Noah were, so shall it also be in the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now here's the bigger deal. For those of us that have put ourselves in a category and we say, well, we're not bad and wicked like they are. Guess what we are like they are? We're busy like they are. In the days of Noah, that's how it's going to be. What were they doing? Eating. Anything wrong with eating? No. They were drinking. Excuse me while I have a sip of this water. Anything wrong with having a drink of water? They were marrying. Anything wrong with marrying? They were giving in marriage. Anything wrong with that? No. You know what that represents to us? They were just having everyday life. They were going through life. How many people have become overwhelmed with everyday life. Man, here's what I do. I do it eight to ten hours a day. I put those eight to ten hours into a group that's six or seven days a week, five, six or seven days a week. I put that week with three other weeks. I call it a month. I pay everybody that I've got to pay. I turn around and do it again. In between going to do that, I'm driving my car that's wearing out, so I need to get another car, and I put that payment, that's going to increase this. I've got kids that need to be here and kids that need to be there. Hey, here's my future plans as far as getting married, and then there's food and clothing and shelter, and I'm eating and I'm drinking, I'm going out, and here's what I need to do. And before life, life gets so busy that we forget, man, hey, it just came upon me. It's everyday life. But listen, we've become consumed with everyday life, and we've stopped building an ark. 
In the days of Noah, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving a marriage. You know what? They were walking right by Noah and said, Noah, nice ark, but listen, man, we've got plans tonight. Listen, I can't talk to you. People are too busy with life to get in the ark. They're too busy to believe. You know why? Because they're reacting to sight. Whatever it is that they think they need to do. Reacting by the fear of things that they'd, they think might happen instead of being confident in the unseen. God made promises to his children. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said that if I'm for you, who can be against you? He said, come to me and I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you alone. If we really believe that, if you really believed it, you had faith, would you fear? But instead, we walk by sight. The Bible tells us clearly to walk by faith and not by sight. You see, we can see these things by faith and act upon them like Noah did and proclaim it. When you do that, you build a visible ark for others to see. I would ask you today, are you here and you've refused to believe in something that you can't see. It's always seemed ridiculous to you. Or maybe you're just not sold out. You're not bought into that. I've seen these Christian people act, and I've seen people act like this before, and then I've seen them act bad. Well, I'll go ahead and tell you that the only thing difference between someone is, that's saved and someone that's lost is they're still a sinner. It's just a saved sinner and a lost sinner. Those people are going to still disappoint you. Those people are going to mess up. But your faith depends on not what you believe about that person, but what you believe in God. Amen. So, maybe you've refused to believe in something you can't see. I would ask you today to please consider the message that God gives you today. He invites you into the ark. He tells you He loves you. He tells you that He loved you enough to send His Son Jesus to die for you and that you are a sinner. If you confess to Him you're a sinner and ask Him to use His blood to cover your sins, He will save you today. By you believing in something you can't see. And then once you get saved, you will be able to see some things that you never thought you could. And maybe today you're here and you believe, but you realize that you need to act more upon your belief. You need to speak more to those that don't have faith. I would ask you today, if you had to answer this question, are you like Noah? Are you moving with fear to prepare your ark? Maybe you say, oh, I would if my, my job didn't require as much, or I would if I didn't have these issues going on, or I would if my hobby didn't take up this, or I would if I didn't like to do this. Well, yeah, yeah, everybody's got a reason, I'm sure. I've had mine, you may have yours. It's not the question. The question is, like Noah, are you moving with fear to prepare your ark? You say, why do I need an ark? You need an ark to the saving of your family. You need an ark to the saving of your friends. And guys, we need an ark to the saving of society. I'm not ready to give up and say, what's going on? Why can't people see? I'm ready to show some people what I believe in that I can't see. So that their faith can increase and we can put some people on the ark, right? That's the way to solve this, not just to sit around and complain about it. Our faith lets us see the unseen so that we can act upon it, not so that we can say, well, I believe it even though I can't see it. We have to act upon it. We have to build our ark by listening to what God says in His written word and what the Holy Spirit says. God will warn us like He did Noah, but if we don't act by faith, we won't see the inside of that ark. So what are we doing with those things that God's allowing us to see that unbelievers can't see? What are we doing with it? You told me all these things you believe. What are we doing with it? Are we proclaiming it like Noah did? He was a preacher of righteousness, right? Are we preaching them? Are we using them for motivation to build an ark for the saving of our family and friends? Every person's salvation is based on them believing the things not seen. Every person ever saved, that salvation is based on them believing the things not seen. And every Christian's that, that's people who have believed it. Every Christian's life work and every Christian's blessings 
are based and depend upon acting upon things not seen. Did you ever know that things not seen play such a big role in your life? Do you know how easy it is to get into a situation where you're only reacting to things seen? All the world is. As Christians, we're supposed to act towards things not seen, to get saved and to continue to live a Christian life. So pray with me today. As we pray, I would ask you to search your heart today. I would ask you to ask yourself today, first of all, have I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior? Do I know that I know for sure that I'm going to heaven? Do I know that I know for sure that I've repented of my sins, I've confessed my sins to Him? Not that you can remember them all, but you've confessed you're a sinner. And you've asked Jesus to save you, believing that He died for you. And you really believe it, but you've never prayed that prayer. Today, I would invite you during this time of invitation, I would love to pray with you. I'd love for you to leave here today knowing that you're in that ark. That you've expressed that faith in something that you can't see. Because that faith is what will help you please God. It's what will help you have a relationship with God. So today, if you haven't done that, I'm going to invite you as we stand and sing today. I'm going to invite you to come. Let's pray together. Let's make sure that you're in that ark. I'm just somebody that's proclaiming his word today. But God needs you to proclaim his word too. And as you're a Christian in this room today, how easy is it for us to begin to walk by sight and worry and fear and live in that anxiety and that busyness? God asks us to walk by faith. And if we do, we can believe in something that's not seen. And then we can use that to build this ark because God's warned us, these are the last days. Not a matter to scare you, not a matter even to motivate you. But a matter to share God's word with you so that you can see that, hey, it's time to act upon our faith like Noah did. By faith, Noah was warned of God of things not seen. By faith, me and you are warned of God of things not seen. And we need to begin to act upon that faith. So let's... Let's pray together. And then as we stand and sing after the prayer, I want you to come and talk to God and make sure that where you're where you need to be with your faith. Father God, I love you and I praise you. I pray that you work in hearts today. I pray, God, that if there's anyone here, Lord, give them a boldness now to not care who, who sees or what anybody says, but let them walk before you and kneel before you and accept your salvation as you open the doors of the ark to them. And I pray, God, for Christians in this room, Lord, we fail to act upon our faith. Lord, we get busy. Lord, because we've got busy, society has become wicked. We hear your warning. We want to begin to start working on our ark so others can see, Lord. I pray, God, that as your children see that today, that you would move in this congregation as people rededicate their life and their life's work to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? Page 52, page 52. Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior,
and purchase my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Sing verse 3. I love thee in life, I will love thee in death, and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath. And I appreciate you coming today, and I appreciate everybody being so attentive, and I pray that, uh, that God's Word spoke to you today. I invite you to come back this evening. Don't forget at 4.30, we have a uh, meeting about the stay-at-home mission. Um, please be praying towards that, uh, doing what you can do. Be praying that lives will be changed during this week, and that uh, God will be glorified in all that's said and done. And then we have our 6 o'clock regular service tonight, so I'd invite you to come back for that. Any announcements that we have before we leave? Anybody? No? Brian, will you dismiss this one first?